welcome everybody. Uh, it's 11 o'clock, so we'll get started. Uh, I'm Emily Welsh, the Program Manager for the Principles of Manufacturing Program. Joining me today are Sandra Akiki, the Academic Programs Administrator for Holy Spirit University of Catholic, and Peter Boyd, the Coordinator for the MS and Professional Studies at Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, we will be answering questions throughout this webinar, so if you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box and we will make sure to answer them. So to get started, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Principles of Manufacturing program. Uh, this program began in 2018. It was created as part of the MITx MicroMaster series, uh, and we had three main goals. We wanted to provide a really high quality education in the basic fundamentals of manufacturing, and we wanted to provide them to a global audience for free. And then for students who wanted a credential, we wanted to provide that at a minimum cost. And that's something we work very hard on, is keeping the cost of the credential as low as possible. And then ultimately, we wanted to offer an accessible pathway for learners to get a graduate education. Two years after founding, our program is still definitely growing. Uh, so far, we've reached learners in 186 different countries, which is a really excellent number. Uh, we've had 110 verified learners earn at least one course certificate, and 36 people have earned the full program credential. This January, we had our first two blended master's students join our campus uh, to start earning their master's using their POM certificate as program credit. So with your POM credential, uh, you can either apply to the MIT Master's Program in Advanced Manufacturing and Design, which is an eight-month mix of classroom learning and a project in industry, and we'll earn you a master's degree from MIT, or you can apply to one of our eight pathway universities, go through their program, and receive a master's degree from that university. And our pathway universities are global. Uh, we are always trying to expand and make sure that we have an accessible pathway everywhere in the world. Um, joining us today, we have RIT and Holy Spirit University of Catholic. And this is some feedback we've received from our learners. Um, they expressed that they didn't think that starting their online classes would eventually lead them to getting to the MIT campus, but that they're really glad that they persevered. You know, taking online classes can be very difficult, especially while you're working full time. But getting through it and, and joining campus was something that they really valued and, and wanted to express that other people could experience as well. Um, so that's, that's my very brief introduction. Uh, as you all know, you can contact the POM team at this email. And more information about the MIT master's degree can be found at manufacturing.mit.edu. And now I'll we'll turn it over to Sandra Akiki from the University of Catholic. All right, Sandra, I can see your screen. Or, sorry. Hang on. All right. Uh, a few technical issues. Uh, so while we try and get Sandra back online, Peter, would you mind telling us about your program? Sure, I'd happy to. Um, as Thank you, Emily. And as Emily said, I'm Peter Boyd. I'm the program director for the Master's in Professional Studies at RIT through the School of Individualized Studies. If I can get my slides to move here. Nope. Ah. So uh, a little bit about RIT. RIT is about 180 years old. We're located in not so sunny at the moment, Rochester, New York. Uh, we're 20, uh, close to 20,000 students, with the bulk of our students being undergraduate, although we have increasingly been growing our PhD and master's programs pretty aggressively in the last 20 years, so that's a, that's a significant growth area. We're seeing about 30% growth overall in that space. Primarily, RIT developed as an institution to service the needs of the imaging industry in Rochester, New York, which was Kodak, Xerox, and Bausch and & Lomb, although it has greatly expanded into seven colleges that cover everything from computation to traditional science, to engineering, to liberal arts, 
and ultimately programs like mine, which is the School of Individualized Study, which you can think of best as a meta college to the rest of the institution. So at the graduate and undergraduate level, we allow students to come into the program and design a plan of study that leverages the entire institution catalog of coursework so that they can create a, a customized degree to their own unique interests. So the degree itself is a 33 credit MS degree. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the actual structure in a moment. The majority of, excuse me, oh, you can take it online as well as on campus, although I would say the majority of our students take the program online at this point, um, just because of the wide reach of where RIT interacts with students from. And there's also a value for students taking an online that you can take and receive uh, upwards of a 40% discount on the tuition. Um, as I said, it's, excuse me, um, Oh, sorry. Full-time students who probably make up 50% of the students in the program often completed in 18 months, and part-time students can take as long as seven years to complete it. Um, in terms of the structure of the actual program, there's a gateway course that all students take where they define what their plan of study is, and the plan of study usually consists of two to three areas of course concentration that make sense programmatically as individual blocks but then complement each other in respect to a larger theme for the student's course of education. So a common thing you might see would be something like say, project management paired with engineering, um, or project management and software paired together, or public policy and community outreach. The concentrations traditionally do mirror existing content areas within the university, but there's nothing stopping a student developing a concentration that is uniquely their own as well. Um, courses can, let's see, um, courses in the concentrations can come, of course, through the existing RIT course catalog. So you can take courses which are on campus or online. You can also use, depending on how you use it, one to two edX MicroMasters. Um, we take transfer credit, independent study, credit for experience, and experiential learning are also options. In the end of the day, our goal is ultimately to devise a plan of study that's unique and specific to the needs of the student and not to get too hung up on the specifics of what a traditional education may or may not look like. So there's a lot of latitude there and it always comes down to having a discussion with the student about what it is they're trying to achieve. Um, and finally, the program concludes with the students completing a capstone project, which is, I like to think of it as a, an applied thesis. You know, a thesis might be traditionally something like a large research study where there's no necessary practical application of the knowledge that you gain. But in our case, because we feel that there's a professional focus for the students coming through the program, but also there's a need for students to be able to show and leverage what they've done in the program as a means of moving on with their career in some way, we, we push the capstones towards being applied. Um, and they ultimately come down to being designed around what the student wants to do with their education. So we've seen capstones as wide as people developing a traditional business plan or developing a training program, all the way up to a student who is doing things like 3D printing of prosthetics to, and building brain interfaces to go with them, or we have a student who's in the program now who's working on um, clear solar cells that could be applied to windows and, and windshields and things of that nature. So there's a lot of latitude there. Slide. Why is it not moving? So who chooses the program? Um, generally speaking, there's, there's three types of people who come into the program. We see people who are very mission driven and generally are looking to accomplish something in life that need a forum or a space where they can get the learning and the support they need to help them do that. Um, we also see a large number of students who come into the program who are mid-career and they need a credential so they can pivot in some way of their career or they need that credential so they can go further. And I'd say these are probably the largest group of people we see in the program. Um, you know, as I, I gave some examples earlier, but a, a classic would be somebody who works in, a low, in an engineering company that needs some managerial training and project management skills so that they can, they can move up to the next level of where they want to be in their career. And we also so pe see people who need an academic restart. And these are, tend to be people who have come to the institution um, 
started in one track and realized that it, maybe they didn't have a full understanding of what that meant in respect to the types of learning and experience and job opportunities it would bring them and have found a new passion. So we're a place where they can leverage a little bit of that old learning and apply new focus and direction to it so they can go off in the direction that they want to be. Um, as I said earlier, about 65% of the students are working adults and primarily attend online part time. Um, I would say the one group of students who don't do well in the program, and I'd say this as a cautionary tale to anybody who's interested, are people who are in exploration mode. If you're looking to sort of figure it out as you go, it's probably not a good match because you end up in a position where you're taking a lot of courses from a lot of different places, but you don't have a good sense of how to how to pull them all together in, in a meaningful way. So it can end up being a frustrating experience. Of course, we provide a very high touch amount of mentoring and advisement in the program, which can help with this, but it is something to consider if you're looking at RH. Um, so pathways, people who are coming from the uh, principles of manufacturing program, what are, the, what are the options for you coming into the program like this? Well, we'll give you 12 credits towards the 33 required credits or the master's as transfer when you bring that micro master's into the program. You can pair that with any concentration really that you can imagine that RIT has the coursework to facilitate, but obvious ones that come to mind would be project management, industrial systems engineering, quality management, big data and machine learning, data science, business analytics, and you know, public policy might be another, and really the rest of it is kind of open to discussion. You can obviously leverage existing RIT coursework. RIT has its own plate of MicroMasters, project management, cybersecurity, and a whole bunch more that are coming, which are a, a good means of building out a second concentration in the program. Um, and you can even do things as broad as working with an independent with a faculty member to develop an independent study or a shadowing experience or some sort of experiential learning as a means of getting course credit. Uh, current tuition rates, rates are for full-time on-campus and part-time students, $1,980 per credit hour. Um, full-time is measured at nine to 12 credit hours per semester. Online students receive a significant discount. It's $1,129. Um, the reality is the course offerings online are a little less than what we have on campus, but we have a fairly rich offering as well. So I wouldn't see that as a, as a deterrent by any means. Um, in terms of scholarship within SOIS, within the master's program, we have a significant amount of funds to offer. Um, they have to be based on merit, and we've got some metrics for that, which I could talk to anybody offline about if they're interested, and we offer tuition support up to 50%. If you want to learn more, there's a, a URL on the slide here to, to RIT's admissions office, which has all the details. Um, so I would say in terms of next steps for anybody who's interested, you could talk to one of the senior academic advisors for the program, Wendy Giuliano, whose email address is provided, is a good starting point. Of course, I'm always open to talk to anybody who wants to send me email as well. I, my email is on the last slide of of this deck. Um, in terms of enrollment deadlines, we have a rolling admissions, more or less. So anybody who applies at least two weeks before the start of the next term will be considered for enrollment in the, in the coming term. And we do take students in in summer, fall, spring, fall semesters. We offer also, I should note, that RIT offers courses online at least in 14 week blocks as well as seven week blocks. So there are opportunities to earn up to, uh, to take, you know, uh, what up to six, six different blocks of courses within a, within a year. So you can get through the things fairly quickly if you're motivated to do so. So um, if you want to talk offline, that's fine, but I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you. All right, we have a few questions. Uh, the first is, would my MicroMasters program certificate give me a higher chance of being accepted into your program? No. So is it considered within admission? Um, it is considered, but we look at it from the perspective of what you want to pair it with when you come into the program. We don't have a cap on how many people we take into the program. So. All right. And is your program mixed between project management and the manufacturing principles path? 
if you wanted to mix those as concentrations within the program, you could, but the choice is yours. There are, I use project management as an example because we have a micromasters in project management. And so a lot of people who come to us from that space tend to leverage it, but there are plenty of students in the program who don't take project management at all. It just comes down to the, the individual interests of the students. I would say uh, at the moment we have about 85 students in the program, and of those 85, probably only about 40 are making use of project management in some way. Uh, how long typically does a part-time student take to finish the degree program? A part-time student could get through it as early as 18 months, although I would see something more in the range of 24 being realistic. Again, it comes down to the how much acceleration you bring through a micromasters and other learning that we can give you credit for, and how aggressive you want to be about taking courses. What do most students do after graduation? Do they usually get promotion after graduation? Again, that's a hard one to answer because we have, we're all things to all comers. And we've had students use the program as a means of devising what their retirement's going to look like in an active form. We've, um, most students who are in a, coming from a corporate setting, who are those mid-career people I talked about, generally it, it leads to some sort of promotion or expansion of duties because one of the reasons that they took the degree in the first place was as a means of, of addressing a requirement placed on them by their But I would say the, you know, I don't have the specific number, but easily 90% of our students are employed after. Are there specific steps an international student needs to take to apply to the program? And is there a language requirement like AALTS or TOEFL? There is a TOEFL requirement. Forgive me, I don't know what this, the requirement is off the top of my head. All the other requirements for international students are no different than any other US-based institution. Um, I would direct you back to the admissions link on the previous slide. Just all that information is spelled out quite clearly on their, on their webpage. And because RIT has a significant number of students who come from around the world, as well as our own global campuses, um, we have a, a large set of support resources for international students, whether they're on campus or online. Um, if someone has completed both the Principles of Manufacturing program and the MIT Supply Chain MicroMasters, could they use both programs toward credit? No. One of the, if you're going to use two MicroMasters in the program, they have to come. One of them has to be an RIT MicroMasters, and the other has to come from a pre-curated list, which is on the admissions page, of MicroMasters programs that we have an, uh, an agreement with. So in the case of Principles of Manufacturing, we have an agreement along with many of the other MITx MicroMasters. So all of those could be used, but they have to be paired with uh, a MicroMasters offered by RIT as well. Great. I think that was all the questions. So we'll switch over to Sandra talking about the Holy Spirit University of Catholic program. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Sandra Akiki. I'm the Academic Programs Administrator uh, at the Office of the Provost at the Holy Spirit University of Catholic Lebanon, USEC. Um, I'll start with a small introduction about our university, and then we'll go deeply uh, with the principles of manufacturing, uh, the pathway, and its related MS in uh, Industrial Process Engineering. So um, the Lebanese Maronite Order, it's an order of monks, they have devoted themselves to intellectual activities and development of the teaching policy of philosophy, law, and theology since their founding in 1695. And then in 1938, they founded the Holy Spirit University of Catholic, which is a private Catholic institution of higher education. The university mission is to contribute to the development of all its students through quality education programs and research in various fields of study. By providing a high-quality American-style education to its students, 
USAC intends to prepare future leaders in Lebanon within the Middle East and throughout the world. Basically, we have one main campus. Uh, it's uh, in Kastlik, which is uh, located in the city of Juni, uh, on the splendid uh, border of the Bay of Juni on the Mediterranean Sea. We also have three regional centers um, distributed all over the Lebanese territory. One in uh, north of Lebanon, it's RUC Shika, one in the Bika Valley, RUC Zahle, and one in the south of Lebanon, RUC Ermish. USEC has been positioned around the world uh, in the top 650 universities, according to QS ranking, and among top five universities in Lebanon. USEC has also ranked uh, first sustainable university according to Crane Metrics for almost three consecutive years, uh, which put us in a really good position in Lebanon and in the Middle East. Um, also at USEC, we really focus on accreditation uh, and we have, uh, we've been accredited on the institutional level, on the student services level, and on the program level. Uh, in September 2009, USEC has completed an institutional evaluation program conducted by EUA and became the first university in the Middle East that conducts such an evaluation program. Also, uh, USEC is accredited uh, institutional accreditation by EVALAG, the European Institutional Accreditation which was initially granted in December 2012. And in June 2017, we have been re-accredited and awarded the EVALAG label for five years until 2022. The uh, Student Services Accreditation in 2015, USEC became the first university in Lebanon and the region to gain accreditation for its student support services, which aims to ensure its commitment to offer high quality services to its, to its student for their welfare on campus and ultimately for supporting them in their learning career and life goals. On the program level, we have several accredited programs from different accreditation boards. Uh, one of them is ABAT, where the Agriculture Engineering, Biomedical, Chemical, Civil, Computer, Electrical, Mechanical, Telecommunication Engineering are accredited by the Engineering Accreditation Commission of ABAT. The Computer Science and IT are accredited by the Computing Accreditation Commission. And the actuarial financial mathematics and nursing sciences are accredited by the Applied and Natural Science Accreditation Commission by ABAT as well. Avalog, the, the same one that we have with them, the institutional accreditation, they, ha they also have the program accreditation for, for our education, history, journalism, journalism and communication, languages, Arabic, English, and French modern languages and translation, philosophy, psychology, social sciences. Of course, here we're all talking on the, on the undergraduate level, the BA, BE, BS. Also, our Master of Architecture is accredited by NAB. Recently, we received it in 2019. And uh, our master degree is, uh, is also equivalent to the French Diploma in Architecture uh, by the French Minister of Culture in 2018. Currently, our business school is engaged in the AATSB accreditation. Hopefully, um, we're in the process of receiving the accreditation. Um, USEC offers around 164 programs across seven, seven schools, uh, which are the Architecture and Design, Business School, Law and Political Sciences, Arts and Sciences, School of Engineering, School of Medicine and Medical Sciences, and the Pontifical School of Theology, which is actually the first school founded by the order of the Lebanese Maronite order. These programs range from undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral. We, we have two freshman programs, freshman arts and sciences. We have around 40 minors. We have 54 undergraduate programs, around 66 master programs, and 44 doctoral programs. We also do have centers that help our students in research, such as of course, the library, the Higher Center for Research, Doctor College, USEC Laboratory, Phoenix Center for Lebanese Studies, Research Centers on Minorities in the Middle East, Latin American Studies and Cultural Center, Archaeological Museum, and a Dealing Room. Um, the University of USEC is really open to the world, and we have now around 53 general agreements with international 
institutions. We have 49 membership in international organizations and around 150 cooperation agreements with foreign higher education institutions. UTEC is a student-oriented institution. We, or, we almost have 7,500 7, students uh, um, registered uh, per year. We, ha we offer around $15 million of financial aid, which are um, really provided by the OLM themselves, and where 30% of our registered students benefit from this financial aid. There are around eight programs of financial aid offered. There's a really dynamic student life. Um, we foster a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship, especially by the Asher Center, which, is, which was founded recently. To have more a clear idea about our student life and experience, we will watch in the next um, slide a small video, and then we'll continue our presentation. I came all the way to Lebanon to study at UZEG. Everything went in very smoothly and uh, just coming to a different country, uh, UZEG I think helped me out a lot uh, to just make friends and get used to Lebanon and get used to my life here. Um, every year we get to travel, we get to visit different countries, play in a different arenas. Uh, I think especially since basketball is my passion, I made the right decision to come to Isaac. <laughs> okay. The center was founded by Tony Asher, a Lebanese American entrepreneur, to support and encourage Lebanese entrepreneurship here at the Holy Spirit University of Kesli. I was of the first batch that participated with the Asher Center. Uh, my product was a healthy snack bar that is based on healthy foods and a new superfood that is taking a global wave and that is taking success in the US and in Canada. The Green Committee is a family from different backgrounds. We all work for the same purpose in order to obtain our goal and make UZEC and hopefully Lebanon greener. So at UZEC, our organic waste and recyclables are taken into the material recovery facility. Our plastics, glass and papers are sorted, then they are baled and sent to recycling facilities. UZAC provided me with an excellent learning experience through its Learning and Teaching Excellence Center. It helps students, faculty and staff transforming their passion into performance. Being a new student at UZAC, I decided to apply at the Biomedical Engineering Department because it's one of the many accredited programs at UZAC. Accreditation made me confident. It will help me pursue my degree abroad at a partner university. Also, I'm sure that it will make a big difference in my future career. I'm proud to have been one of the few students who were able to represent my university abroad twice. 
my international experience paved the way for me to get a global engagement certificate, a way to recognize my international journey. The Faculty of Medicine and Medical Sciences at ISAC has taught me most importantly how to approach a patient. And now with the new building, with the latest new technologies, we can earn very good experience at the hospital. The USEC Continuing Learning Center is offering education for anyone who is interested. We are offering courses in business, in health, in uh, arts. We're also offering the certificate in cosmetics, in cosmetology, and we have the summer school. Ah, ah! Can we do لا بس جملة صغيرة هيك للآخر I personally recommend people to come to ISAC I think they're really gonna enjoy it and it's just a wonderful experience I'm proud to launch Freaky Bites from ISAC Join us to keep ISAC the greenest university in Lebanon and just in two words, go green one, two, three, different. Finally, I'm glad that I chose this university and I'm a proud Isaacian. Okay, so now um, Isaac focuses on building tight relationships with mission-driven education institutions and organizations outside the borders of a traditional campus while serving its, its mission and goals. Therefore, in March 2019, ISEC became a pathway institution for MITx Micromaster Program credentials. And today, as we speak about the MS in Industrial Process Engineering, MITx uh, learners uh, having a MITx Micromaster in Principles of Manufacturing are eligible to apply to the MS in Industrial Process Engineering at USEC. The mission of the industrial process engineering is to graduate students who are skilled in applying design, implementation analysis, and operation of large-scale industrial processes and manufacturing techniques. Um, here we have a small comparison between the MicroMaster and our MS in industrial process engineering. So the holders of the MITx principles of manufacturing, they have listed courses, which are uh, equivalent and are um, therefore uh, transferred to the MS in Industrial Process Engineering. These, the highlighted in red are the ones transferred from the MITx MicroMaster to the MS. So the remaining credits in black are the only remaining credits that a student should uh, pursue uh, if he applies to USEC, which are almost 15 credits in total and they could be um, distributed over two semesters, or uh, I don't think a, a student could finish a thesis and uh, other courses. So basically you could finish all the courses in one semester and the remaining thesis in the other semester. It's a one year uh, time frame. So if you are a holder, as we said, of an MITx MicroMaster in Principles of Manufacturing, you can apply to our MS in Industrial Process Engineering. How to apply? Uh, our page of the program on our website, there's a contact sheet. You could follow the instructions. You fill out your information, the program you are interested in, because we, we also have another pathway with MITx. You fill up the information required, and we get back to you in like in a week maximum um, to, to check if you are eligible to apply for the MS in um, uh, process, uh, industrial process engineering.
um, if you make the right decision on time, we will transfer you to the International Affairs Office. There's a link there. You could go where they are uh, they're there to support you through the file processing, the admission, the registration, and your whole stay in Lebanon. Uh, and also, they are there to provide you with assistance concerning the accommodation, the visa, and life in Lebanon. Of course, our program is on campus-based. It's campus-based program. So uh, no, no courses are offered online. Um, uh, you have to move into Lebanon. Um, so there, therefore, our international affairs is always ready to help out with uh, any needed. On your checklist, you should keep also always the admission file for graduate studies. The link is available. Uh, you should uh, have a copy of your passport, of course, passport size photos, official transcript for your MIT MicroMaster when you're done of the of the, the MicroMaster, and a related bachelor degree. Here, here we have to stress on having a uh, um, related bachelor degree, for example, in engineering, whatever major uh, mechanical, industrial, telecommunication, electrical, you are eligible to apply for a master program here in Lebanon. So therefore, you should have a MITx micro master and a bachelor degree. Some helpful information. First of all, if you're considering to uh, apply uh, uh, to our program, our credit fees for the, for the graduate programs are around $480 per credit, uh, which uh, are like 15 total credits after you transfer your credits from the MIT MicroMaster. Our academic year starts early September till um, late December, the fall semester, and the spring semester starts late, late January till late May. So if you need to consider your uh, moving, your application, your admission, Deadline for application for the fall semester, the deadline is around June 15. We could extend it a bit, especially now with the circumstances that we are facing. For the spring semester, it's November 15. Okay, if you need any uh, information, if you like to contact us directly, either you can contact the provost office at provost.usec.edu.lb or myself on my email, sandraakiki at usec.edu.lb or my direct for number, my office number. So thank you for listening. All right, uh, we have some questions. Sure. Uh, will there be any co-op or internship programs uh, attached to your program? Um, we do have an internship uh, uh, course, I think, within the program. Uh, maybe it's a one credit course. Let me double check it. Yeah, yes, it's a one credit course uh, of internship in uh, uh, companies in Lebanon, uh, which we have relations with. How many students will be admitted to this program? Basically, a program, uh, a master's program. Uh, to become active and uh, effective, there should be around eight to ten students per program. Um, where are your recent alumni employed, and and what is the job outlook for graduates? Um, actually, I don't have uh, enough information about our specific industrial process engineering uh, alumni because our program has been offered like five years ago, and recently we reactivated the program to um, accommodate our MITx learners. So I don't have specific uh, um, answer for that. I can make my research and get back to you with the, with the specific answer. What types of financial aids are offered? Like, do you have any opportunities like teaching assistantships or adjuncts positions? And um, what are the criteria that are used for choosing the recipients? Um, basically, for financial aid, uh, if, uh, currently we, we're not having uh, any T TAs or teaching assistants. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a, um, a project that we will initiate on uh, in the coming uh, days. Uh, but uh, we offer financial aid like um, percentages of from 20 to 50 percent, according to the. Um, uh, uh, financial situation of the student according to their ability to pay. We could 
um, also we have like programs to facilitate the payments and uh, distribute the payments over like 12, uh, 12 months or more. There are different uh, uh, programs of financial aid. Uh, um, the other question you asked me about, um, Sorry, what criteria I, are used for choosing? Criteria, yeah. Uh, there, there are just two criteria, especially for the MITx learners, to have a full MITx degree, micromaster degree, and to have a bachelor degree. Other than that, um, uh, of course, they should be uh, English speakers. They should have a proof of uh, language proficiency. Um, but there's no no other criteria. There's an interview. Uh, that could that should be done uh, within uh, the admission uh, process, but uh, there's no other criteria um, mentioned. Um, what percentage of students at your university are international students? Um, international students. Let me check the numbers. I think they are around 15%. I'm not quite sure about that, but around 15% are international students. Great. Um, if there are any other questions, please type them into the Q&A. And if they like to ask questions that I can answer later on to have more details, I'm, I'm ready anytime on my email. All right. I, uh, I think that's all the questions. So um, thank you, Sandra and Peter, so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. And thank you to our audience uh, for joining us. Uh, there will be a survey that pops up when you exit the webinar. So please take the time to complete that. It really helps us uh, know how we did. So thank you, everyone, for your time. And I uh, hope you have a good day.